If you engage someone and you support them in the decision-making process, they're going to have a better experience. They're going to have better outcomes at a lower cost. This is High Stakes from Gerard Inc. I'm David Schifrin with Gerard Inc. If you are new to the podcast, thanks for checking it out. This podcast, High Stakes, is a place where we look at leadership communications and change management in healthcare. Gerard is a strategic communications firm dedicated exclusively to working with healthcare providers. So we're always interested in not just how healthcare leaders are doing the work that underpins our system of medical care, but also how they talk about the work, how they lead and drive change and innovate with their teams through both words and actions. The conversation today is with Robin Shaw, co-founder and CEO of TimeCare. Robin and I met at the Nashville Healthcare Council Sessions Conference and talked through Robin's work, the way TimeCare serves as a navigator and translator between oncology patients and providers, the way he views trends and competition in healthcare innovation, and finally, his own perspective on leadership. As you listen to the conversation, and you've heard this before on pretty much every podcast that you listen to, please be sure to subscribe, share, rate, and review High Stakes so that more people can find us. Thanks. So Robin, it is really fun to get to meet you and speak with you here at Nashville Healthcare Council Sessions. Thanks for taking the time and we won't bore everybody with the details, but appreciate you weaving your way yeah. through the locked elevators and the locked doors and the tunnels of the yeah. Country Music Hall of Fame to get here. I thought you were going to take me on stage, David. Uh, th- <laughs> thank you so much for having me, David, and, and I'm excited to talk more about uh, just what I've been learning here at Sessions, but also uh, about the industry in general. Yeah, so let's I mean let's go ahead and start there and we'll we'll get into your story and the work that you're doing. But why are you here at Sessions? What brings you here and and what has piqued your interest in in the last 24 hours? Yeah, so some background on myself. I moved to Nashville about 6 years ago to help found an oncology company here. And what I learned is that there's this awesome ecosystem in Nashville on healthcare, tech and entrepreneurship. But it was really early and it is been so amazing to see the transformation of this city in regards to companies and startups and venture capital that has come into the space. And it's so exciting to see the National Healthcare Council put this on. Yeah. And over the last 24 hours, I would say the most exciting thing that I've I've been able to spend time with and be exposed to is there's a lot of great entrepreneurs here. There's a lot of great investors here. And it's just telling you that the ecosystem here in Nashville is just growing so well that everyone wants to come here. And I'm excited to see what this brings for the next 5, 10, 15 years for our community. What are you seeing in terms of, you talk about the tech, you talk about the investors, the entrepreneurs, and of course the landscape is constantly shifting depending on what's needed in the industry. But what are you seeing right now here in town? Are you seeing more Especially services, are you seeing more support, uh, more tech? Yeah, look, my my perspective has always been great companies are built from great people. And Nashville was not always the mecca for technology talent. There's a lot of great healthcare services, a lot of great healthcare folks here, uh, but has not always been the, the market where you find the most technical folks. And I would say with yeah. the infusion of capital from companies like Andreessen Horowitz, Frisk Cressy, who has been so monumental to the success of this town, you are seeing now folks that are and have that background on the technology side and being having interest in being in Nashville. And so that's the greatest thing that I've seen. But from a perspective of companies in the focus area, it's really around how do you change the dynamic of the relationship between the health insurance company, the patient, and their provider. Keep going with that. That's a that's like a that's an Easter egg right now that we gotta pursue. That's the thing. It's challenging right now. Healthcare finances are difficult. We've got to get better with efficiencies. We've got to get better taking administrative a cost in general, but administrative costs out of the system. And one area that just seems like it's so challenging and has so much opportunity, as you said, are those relationships between the three key stakeholders in any kind of healthcare journey. So what are you seeing in terms of the payer, provider, patient relationship? Yeah, look, our our healthcare costs are going up. Our providers are struggling. And ultimately, patients are not getting a better experience. And so you're seeing a wave of companies who are focused on that problem. And we've talked about value-based care for a long time. Forever, yeah. But what does value-based care actually mean? To us, value-based care means two things. Number one is how do you deliver better quality and how do you do that 
at the same or lower cost. And what that requires is unlocking data. And, and what that data really uncovers is where are there problems in the system system, and how do you solve for those problems? And, and that's sort of what we're seeing a lot of these companies do here in Nashville is evaluating specific disease areas and targeting how do we really make this experience better through a bunch of technology process and people orientation and doing that through relationships with providers and patients. And it's just not an expertise of the health plans. We're learning that. The health plans are not set up on these high cost areas and there is subspecialty required and companies are being born out of that. And what's awesome is a lot of them are here based in Nashville. And, and Time Care, the company uh, that we founded uh, about three years ago is focused on the oncology space to solve that specific problem for this disease that impacts almost all of us in some capacity. So let's let's get into time care. And what you just said was about needing the specialization. We need people who understand a very narrow area so they can get really good at it and deliver a really good product or service or care in that area. But it has to be interoperable. It has to be integrated with the rest of the care journey. Talk about the story of Time Care, how you how you got here, and what you're doing. This is bad interview form because I'm I'm now asking like three questions <laughs> in one. But uh, let's just start with the story yeah. of Time Care and get into how your specialty, your specialization, yeah, uh, fits in. Yeah, actually, I'm going to answer them in reverse order. Perfect. I'm going to get to Time Care, but I always think about first principles here. What we know across the entire industry, whether it's oncology or chronic kidney or prenatal, is that if you engage someone and you support them in the decision-making process, whether it's early or ongoing, they're going to have a better experience. They're going to have better outcomes at a lower cost. It's a pretty simple principle of just if you engage a person through the journey, everything should be better. It's, you say it, and it's obvious. Get somebody, don't just leave somebody out in the desert hanging, right. wondering what's happening to right. them, but actually tell them and involve them. And yet, right. healthcare hasn't done it. And yet, healthcare hasn't done it because it's not all paid for that way. You're not paid for in the current world to evaluate what's happening before someone knows what's going to happen. Or you're not paid to check in on someone at home. That's not how the structure is set up today. And so if you think about that and you go to very specific subspecialty diseases like cancer, there is so many problems that you uncover as you start to look at the data. For example, if you're told that you may have cancer, you can only imagine what you or your family or loved ones are all thinking. And it could take two weeks, three weeks to confirm you have a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Not because it takes that long to get the testing or to get the results. It's because there's so many steps and so much process and so much breakdown through there and coordination, and no one is actually paid to do that coordination. And then let's say you unfortunately do have a cancer diagnosis. You get to a great oncologist. They get paid to see you when you're in their clinic. They don't currently get paid to track you outside of the clinic. They don't get paid to take care of you if you end up in the hospital. They will support you and help you. But if you end up in the hospital, they will take care of you there. That's not the best experience. And so the, the, way, the reason we started Time Care was to solve for these problems. We saw these breakdowns for the last 15, 20 years as me and my co-founder, uh, who's an oncologist, have been working in a practice of oncology and supporting people this journey, realizing that there's so many areas to impact the journey for a patient that if you do that, you'll actually start to make a major impact on all the things you mentioned, efficiency, cost, experience, outcomes. And that's the story of time care. That's what we're focused on. How do we build a better experience for patients throughout this entire care journey and their caregivers? And in the end, if you do that, we know that you'll have better outcomes at a lower cost. You've talked about the integration and as well as the relationships, uh, getting all the people involved. And I know that's something that you focus on pretty heavily is ensuring that the patients have the information, that they're connected with the oncologist in the right way. And at the same time, I think one of the points that I've seen you all make is that you're sort of translators. You you just help get the information between, you sort of bridge that gap. So certainly as 
communicators, we at Gerard are, are very interested in this. How do you get the right information to the right stakeholder at the right time, through the right platform, the right, all these things in order for that information to land so they can be engaged, as you were talking about, in the process? I, I love that question. And it sort of relates to a lot of the discussions that have happened here at Sessions is this role of data and this role of AI in healthcare. And again, going back to first principles, you can have technology do all of this great things, but if humans can't use it in a meaningful way, it drives no value. And so the way we think about a time care is how do we use data and analytics and AI to educate people and inform people on what's actually happening and then intervene with humans? If you could start doing that, you then may, may be able to replace some of the human intervention to automated intervention and now do even more advanced AI. But right now, our translation is there's so much going on in a specific diagnosis, and you likely have a bunch of other stuff going on if you have a cancer diagnosis. How do we make sure that we, you understand the diagnosis that you have, the treatment that you're getting, the impact that's going to have on your body? How does it correlate to the other diseases you may have? And how do you navigate through that entire process given there's multiple positions through that? That's the translation that we do. And then there's a translation of non-clinical things that happen. For example, how do you get to your appointment or how do you get to work? You have to pay for stuff. And if you don't have those resources, you can imagine that you're not going to be that successful in your actual journey. I'll give you one story because I just, I find this story to be so fascinating. There was a member that we were working with at Time Care, and this member was, they had a late stage cancer diagnosis. Or they had to have one of their legs amputated due to the diagnosis and treatment. And they lived roughly 0.7 miles away from their, their oncologist to get their treatment. And they didn't have a car and they couldn't afford to get to their appointment. And so what they would do is just call 911, get in the ambulance, get admitted to the hospital, get discharged at the hospital, and then be seen by their oncologist. Now, when we identified that there was a $500 ambulance fee and a $3,000 admission happening on a weekly basis, remember, we tried to identify through the data what is actually happening. And when we talked to the patient, just a simple conversation, we realized that they had no way to get to their appointment. So we got them a $10 Uber or Lyft and got them their appointment every week. Now, no one is looking at these things. Mm -hmm. And these are just simple examples of what happens when you don't translate or you don't understand what people are going through to try to make impact on the space. You took thousands and thousands of dollars out of the system with an Uber gift card, an Uber voucher. And even more importantly, you improve the patient experience and the outcome. And I guess the other part of that that, that strikes me is at least that patient was, was making an effort to get to their, the care that they needed. They were going out of their way right. and, and right. going through this complicated yeah. process. That doesn't even take into account all the people who look at this and say, I can't get there right. for yeah. one reason or the other, yeah. and, they, and they don't. Yeah. No, no. In another case, we had a member who within 48 hours was, was, was going to become homeless. And you can imagine the last thing you're thinking about if you're, if you're going to become homeless is how do I get to my appointment to get a chemotherapy that's going to make me feel sick? And our team activated. We got this person shelter. We got them food. We got them transportation. These are things, again, real problems that happen that are not uncovered through the current processes. And these are non-clinical. I haven't even touched on the clinical issues that happen. Patient that goes home on a Friday and can't get a hold of their doctor because they're having a bunch of complications, end up in the hospital. They're there for three days they could have got a simple over-the-counter medication. And so these are simple things that if you start to really engage people and learn and listen, you could make a major impact on all the things that are happening. And again, those are examples for time care for cancer patients. I would tell you this is happening across the entire industry on chronic conditions. And in Nashville and across the country, you have amazing companies popping up to solve for these problems. And it's, it's so fascinating to see. And, and what's so critical about this uh, model is that you actually need to engage all of the physicians to this process. You just can't do it on the side of your desk. You need to incorporate everything from the health plan and the data they provide to you and their relationships, as well as the providers who are providing local day-to-day -day care to these patients. And that's the ecosystem that's being built, the excitement of what's coming from this new wave of companies. What's the response from the, the, the clinicians to this new wave of companies? You talk about engaging them, getting them part of the process, which means that there is, there's change management involved. You've got to show them the value. 
both financially and in terms of their workflow yeah. and also in terms of how it's going to impact their patients. Yeah, so I come from a family of doctors. My, my father's an oncologist, my little brother's an oncologist, my co-founder's an oncologist. And I'll tell you that, that physicians' nature is to do the best they possibly can for patients. And so we never get resistance when we incorporate and include doctors. And I think that's the real recipe for what we've been able to do at Time Care is this is not a model where we have designed the model and we are telling doctors what to do. We are providing clinical wraparound support services and we are there to help them and their patients and it costs them and their patients nothing. And the focus is how do we provide a better experience? And the second you start to have that discussion with the doctor, it's very simple. We want to build this with you to provide better value to your patients. And we've got no issues through that process. We thought that there would be some resistance, but it just didn't happen. I think what doctors started to realize that, hey, this is the wave. And if someone's going to help me and my patients, I'm, I'm in. Let's do this. And we're now advancing all of our relationships with providers where we're, we're giving them the data. And we're saying, where do you think you're seeing gaps in the data here on ways you think you can drive value? And if you can do that, we'll share in that value with you guys. We will want you to participate in this change because this model of not being compensated or, or structured in a way that drives long-term value for this population isn't going to work. And so let's do this together. Robin, why, why now? Why is this the right moment to do it? Why is this working now? Why? Yeah, I think a couple things. So one is just the amount of data that we've been able to unlock over the last 10, 15 years has allowed us to understand these problems a little better. Number two is that we're seeing a shortage of the staff and the people needed to take care of all of all of the sick folks across the country. And so if you think about that comment you made earlier on efficiency, there's just there's a lack of efficiency. Yeah. And if you just drive up the cost in inefficient ways and you don't have the people to take care of them, you're going to have struggle around that. And so there is a movement to try to create efficient structures and workflows and processes. And the last is that the cost of care is just going up so rapidly and no one understands why. And so you have this opportunity and wave of companies that are being born out of this three-pronged uh, issue across all the stakeholders. And I think that's the direction. I would say a lot of companies uh, in other conditions paved the way for the rest of us, and now we're learning from them. So there are companies like Monogram and Strive in the chronic kidney space. Yeah. You have companies like Nava Health that were in the post-acute space, and all of them have really learned the models, and now we're translating that to other specialties and trying to understand where the opportunities are given the data that, that exists out there. Okay. It's, it's something of a burning platform issue where there's just there's really no choice, but we've got to drive the change. And... Yeah, and so the last thing I mentioned, and this is oncology specific, is that in oncology, the largest health insurance company or payer is Medicare, given the age, population, and distribution. And Medicare has launched two models now, starting in 2016, and now they're on model number two in 2023. Those have a bit paved the way in oncology. I will tell you, there there are no other companies doing what Time Care is doing today because it is so complex, but I do anticipate there being a number of competitors trying to build models and engagement in this in this disease, primarily because there's so much opportunity for change. You've talked a lot about the sort of the trailblazers, Neva Health, Monogram. You've talked about your again your peers and your competitors. <laughs> what what's the vibe in the space right now when you yeah. see in folks that yeah, yeah. you yeah. you work with or you bump yeah. up against? Yeah. So I would say it's so fascinating because there's two marketplaces, right? You have the people at Sessions, the industry, and the energy is really high. I was talking to a couple people this weekend about the seven conferences in the next six weeks, three of them in Nashville, which is amazing for us because we yeah. live here. And all of the talk is about companies like TimeCare or Strive or Monogram or some. There's all this discussion around this transformation and there's excitement and, and the, the vibe is just who's coming into the marketplace and who's going to actually make it over the hump. Starting a company is not easy and getting into the space is even more complicated. And I think there's a lot of discussion around where investors are going to make their bets because really good companies alongside the people 
because their investors make such a massive impact on the success of the organization, I believe. And I think that every investor is looking at every industry and saying, how do I get into the winner? And so I know that there in our industry, there's a number of companies incubating, trying to get to where we are at TimeCare. I know there are national companies that have built other com- other derivatives that are trying to then translate their model into TimeCare to see if they can compete with us. I think it's extremely exciting. Rising tides and all boats rise in my, in my experience. And so I love that. I would say what's so fascinating is that if you take outside of the industry and you go talk to you talk to the people in the oncology practices, it's a new world to them. But they don't have this background and experience and and actually they're itching to learn more about it. And I was running a little late today because I was on with a, a large or national oncology practice and they're so excited about transformation. Like that conversation didn't happen five years ago in this space and they want to be a part of these discussions. And I think that's what's going to really drive the success of these models is that both sides of the industry, the the investors and, and the people that are here at this conference, as well as the people that are actually taking care of folks and running these large practices all want this transformation. And it's great to see the competition and the, the organizations being born out of all this change. Robin, you've been uh, incredibly generous with your time and your insight today. Um, do you have time for, for one more? Yeah, yeah okay. definitely. I'm going to take a hard pivot here yeah. and, and ask a question about you and your approach to the work that you're doing, N- not just at Time Care, but just in general. So h- how do you think about leadership, communications, team building? Yeah, yeah. You, you have this experience, you've built companies, you're building a company. And when you get up in the morning ready for work and are prepping for your team to go out and do, pursue the shared mission of better oncology care, yeah, yeah. how do you think about that? Yeah, I, I was touched back on something you mentioned here. All of the energy in at this session's conference and in the industry, I would tell you all that's great. But r- what really all that matters is the people in your company and the people you recruit are going to be the ones that are going to build that company. And the people that build a great company are going to make a major impact on people out there who are struggling. And that's really all that matters. And I would tell you the way that we think about company build and culture and values is how do we find people that care about this specific mission and people that are bought into what we're working on. And all of the other stuff around is really around getting the, your voice out and making sure people know what you're doing. Um, but it's all about building a, a culture that people are bought into to drive this out of value. And we do this thing that, that I really love at our company, uh, which is uh, before every board meeting, uh, every single week, and before every major meeting we have internally in the company, we do patient stories. And, nice. and you, those stories that I mentioned to you are just two of hundreds or thousands of stories. And you get to really see that there's someone on the other side of all this stuff yep. that's going to be impacted. And whether it's Time Care or other companies, I would tell you the people at the end of these solutions are the ones that really matter. And you can learn so much by just hearing about these stories or talking to these people because they're the ones that benefit from what we're working on. And ultimately, that's all that matters. That's how I think about That's how we think about it. Our company, my co-founder and I, are so focused on that and the people that that we've found it in our culture. I think you probably know this. With 13 people from Flatiron Health come with us to Time Care, and we've built this culture around just caring about what we're building and focused on on the outcomes of the people that are at the end of the of the solution. So that's how we think about it so much, Robin. If people want to find more about, find out more about Time Care, it's T-H-Y-M-E-C-A-R-E dot com. That is correct, yeah. Okay, and then any other information, any other contact that people should know about? You could always email us. I think there's info at timecare.com or press at timecare.com. You go to our website and, and reach out for information. There's a bunch of great information coming out here soon about recent articles on our outcomes, on some new partnerships that we're about to announce that are going live right now. And a lot of great stuff happening. We're, we're launching, we'll be in 30 states by the first quarter of 2024. Uh, and we are, we are heavily recruiting. Uh, we're about 130 or 140 people in the company today and expect to grow pretty rapidly over the next 6 to 12 months. That's fantastic. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you Good so luck. Much. Have fun. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, I'm excited about everything that's happening here at this conference, but also across the industry. Sounds good. Thanks, Robin. I'll let you get back to yeah. listening to the talks. Thank you. 